Hi guys, welcome to this session by IntelliPad. In this session, we will tell you about cyber security interview questions, but not in the regular way. We will try to simulate how a cyber security interview happens and how you should answer those questions. After that, we will also give you certain set of questions related to this topic. Now, before we begin the session, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to get further notifications. Now, without wasting any time, let's get into the topic. So, what is cyber security in your opinion? Uh, so, cyber security is protecting your data or network from unauthorized access so that hackers cannot steal it or destroy it. Uh, one example I can give you is cryptography and uh, two-factor authentication that Google uses. So, as hackers are getting innovative day by day, I think cyber security is very important. So, what's the difference between hacking and cyber security? Uh, so, hacking is an offensive term. Uh, when a hacker hacks into your system and steals your data or destroy it, it is called as hacking. Whereas cyber security, on the other hand, it's a defensive term. We use cyber security to protect from hacking. I see that you have a knowledge of firewalls. Can you tell me what is it? Uh, so firewall is a network security device uh, that monitors incoming and outgoing network traffic. Based on certain set of rules, it either allows or blocks the incoming packet. It acts like a barrier between you and the open internet. What are the type of hackers? Uh, so there are mainly three types of hackers. Uh, we have black hat hacker, white hat hacker and grey hat hackers. Uh, black hat hackers are the hackers who hack into your data and steal your information and destroy it. Uh, white hat hackers on the other hand are the good guys. Companies hire them to hack into their system and report all the vulnerabilities. Uh, whereas if grey hat hackers can either work as black hat or white hat hackers based on any circumstances. What is DNS? Uh, so DNS is domain name system and it's a phone book of internet. So when we type uh, google.com or facebook.com, it converts it into certain digits. We call them as IP address like 168.192.0.1. So we as humans cannot remember what uh, 168.192 is, but domain name server can uh, convert that. Let's start with subjective questions. Now let's get into our first question. The first question is what is a CIA trade? Now CIA Triad is a model designed to handle policies of for information security within an organization. CIA stands for confidentiality, integrity and availability. Confidentiality is a collection of rules that limits access to information. Integrity means it assures the information is trustworthy and reliable. Availability provides reliable access to data for authorized people. It is the most important part of an organization to work and increase their business. Now let's get into our second question. Compare symmetric and asymmetric encryption. It has different purposes. Symmetric uses a single key to encrypt and decrypt information, while asymmetric uses a pair of public and private keys to encrypt and decrypt information. Symmetric encryption performs faster, while asymmetric encryption performs slower. Some algorithms that symmetric uses is AES, RC4, DES, Quad, 3DES, Blowfish, etc. And examples of asymmetric algorithms are Typhi Hellman and RS. The purpose for symmetric encryption is it's preferred for transferring huge data, while in asymmetric is used for exchanging secret keys very, very safely. Our next question is what's the difference between hashing and encryption? Let's look at the answer. Both hashing and encryption are used to convert readable data into an unreadable format. The significant difference is that encrypted data can be transferred into original data by decryption, whereas hashed data cannot be processed back to the original data. Our next question is, what's the difference between vulnerability assessment and penetration testing? The answer for this is, I'll tell you first about vulnerability testing. It's a process to define, detect and prioritize the vulnerabilities in computer systems, network infrastructure applications, etc. and gives the organization the required information to fix the flaws. While penetration testing, which is also called as pen testing or ethical hacking, it's a process of testing a network, system, application, etc. to identify vulnerabilities that attackers could exploit. My next question is, what's a three-way handshake process? People who know networking might have guessed it the right answer. A three-way handshake process is used in TCP protocol for transmission of data in a reliable way between the host and the client. It uses three kinds of packets. The first one is sync packet. The client wants to establish a connection with the server. 
and sends a segment with SYN to the server if the server is up and has open ports. Then the server responds to the client request with sync acknowledge signal bits that send it has open ports. And finally, the client acknowledges the response of a server and sends an ACK packet back to the server. Our next question is, what are the types of port scanning? Now we all know there are ports in computers, right? A port scanning is an application designed for identifying open ports and services accessible only on host network. Security administrators mostly utilize it for exploiting vulnerabilities and also by hackers for targeting victims. Some of the most popular scanning techniques are ping scan, TCP connect, TCP half open, stealth scanning and UDP. Our next question is, what is more secure, SSL or HTTPS? Now SSL is a secure sockets layer. It's a secure protocol that provides safer conversation between two or more parties across the internet. It works on top of the HTTP to provide security. While HTTPS, it means Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure, is a combination of HTTP and SSL to provide a safer browsing experience with encryption. In terms of security, SSL is more secure than HTTPS. Now our next question is very very basic that every networker should know. What are the 7 layers of the OSI model? Now the main objective of the OSI model is to process the communication between two endpoints in a network. I'll start from layer 1 that's physical layer. It transfers the computer bits from one device to another through the network. It also controls how physical connections are set up to the network and also bits represented into signals while transferring either optical, electrical or radio waves. The second layer we have is data link layer. It handles the flow of data to and fro in the network. It also controls problems that occur due to bit transition errors. The third layer we have is network layer. It is used to transfer data to and fro through another network. Transport layer is used for sending data across a network and also offers error checking practices and data flow controls. Session layer determines the period of a system that awaits for another applications to respond. Presentation layer manages encryption and decryption of data required for the application layer. It translates or formats data for the application layer based on the syntax of application that accepts. The final layer we have is application layer. It allows users to communicate between network application when required to perform network related operations. Now let's get into our next question. This is very important for cybersecurity and networking people. What is the use of address resolution protocol aka ARP? Now ARP is a protocol specially used to map IP address to physical address such as Ethernet addresses. It translates 32-bit addresses to 48-bit addresses and vice versa. This is needed because the most common level of IP we use today is 32 bits long and MAC, ad and MAC addresses are 48 bits long. Our next question is how to reset or remove the BIOS password. Now there are many ways to reset or remove BIOS password. You must have seen similar picture like this in your PCs or in your laptops. You have to enter password there and then it and then the hard disk allows you and then the hard disk allows you to get into the computer. Now the ways are by removing the CMOS battery, by using software, by using the MS-DOS command or by using motherboard jumper or by using backdoor BIOS passwords. Now we use tools for this which you are going to learn when you learn cyber security. Just a quick info guys. If you want to make a career in cyber security, then Intellipat has a post-graduation certification in cyber security and ethical hacking by ENICT Academy, MNIT Jaipur. This course is of very high quality and cost effective as it is taught by MNIT professors and industry experts. The next question is explain trace route. Trace route is a tool that shows the packet path. It lists all the points that the packet passes through. Trace route is used mostly when the packet does not reach the destination. It's also used to check where it's also used to check where the connection breaks or stops or to identify the failure. Now if you see in this command prompt, I tried to trace route google.com and it shows me how many hops I have to reach the Google server. The next question we have is, what is a VPN? Now VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. 
A VPN connection establishes a secure connection between you and internet. It's a network connection method for creating an encrypted and safer connection. This method protects data from interference, snooping and censorship. Next we have define the process of salting. What is the use of salting? Now salting is that process to extend the length of passwords by using special characters. To use salting, it's very important to know the entire mechanism of salting. The use of salting is to safeguard passwords. It also prevents attackers testing known words across the system. For example, what you see on your screen. We have a user passwords. We have a user password that's happy face. We add some salt value to it and we get an hash algorithm. Then again we use salt into it and then we get a hash value. Now even if hacker tries to hack your password, he can see the hash value but not the user password. The next question we have is what is black box testing and white box testing? Black box testing is a software testing method in which the internal structure or program code is hidden. Example, when you search something on Google by using keywords. And white box testing is a software testing method in which internal structure of the entire program is known by the tester. For example, when you input to check and verify loops in any program. The next question we have is what is IP and MAC addresses? IP address is the acronym for internal protocol address. An internet protocol address is used to uniquely identify a computer or device such as printers, storage disk or a computer network. For example, we have IP address as 192.64.25.124. MAC address is the acronym for media access control address. They are used to uniquely identify network interfaces for communication at the physical layer of network. We have an example for MAC address 9C355B5F4C D7. Now these are the format what IP address looks like and what MAC address looks like. The next question we have is explain Honeypot and its types. Honeypot is a decoy computer system which records all the transactions, interactions and actions with the users. Honeypot is classified into two categories, Production Honeypot and Research Honeypot. Production Honeypot is designed to capture real information for the administrator to access vulnerabilities. They are generally placed inside production network to increase the security. Research Honeypot is used by educational institutions and organizations for the sole purpose of researching the motives and tactics of the black hat community for targeting different networks. The next question we have is, what is WEP cracking? Web is a secured layer. In order to crack web, we need to first capture the large number of packets that means we can capture a large number of IVs. Once we have done that, we will use tools like aircrack ng. These attacks will be able to use statistically attacks to determine the key screen and web key for the target network. This method is going to be better when we have more than two packets and our chances of breaking the key will be very very higher. The next question we have is, list out various methods of session hijacking. So we have four methods of session hijacking. The first is using packet sniffers, cross-site scripting, IP spoofing and blind attack. The next question we have is, explain the difference between stream cipher and block cipher. Stream operator operates on a small plain text units while block cipher works on very large block data. Stream requires very less code while block requires a larger while block requires a large amount of code. Stream cipher can be used only once whereas block cipher can be used at any number of times. Stream cipher is used on SSL or secure socket layer while block cipher is used to encrypt file and database. Stream cipher is used on hardwares while block cipher is used on softwares. Now let's move on to our next question. What is remote desktop protocol? Let me show you an image first. Have you come across image like this guys? If you are not, go on your run command and then type remote desktop connection and press enter. You will come to the screen. RDP is developed by Microsoft which provides graphical user interface to connect two devices over a network. The user uses RDP client software to serve this purpose while other device must run RDP server software. This protocol is specifically designed for remote management and to, and to access virtual PCs, applications and terminal server. It's time for multiple choice questions guys. Now in this section, I need you guys to answer before I give, give you the answer. 
Which of the following tool is used for Wi-Fi hacking? Any guesses? Well, the correct answer is Aircrack NG. Our second question is, which of the following is a popular IP address and port scanner? I think you guys can guess it. It's Angry IP Scanner. There are dash types of scanning in ethical hacking and cyber security. How many types of scanning are there guys? There are three types of scanning in ethical hacking and cyber security. The next question is, which of the following is the most important activity in system hacking? Is it covering tracks, escalating privileges, cracking passwords or information gathering? The correct answer is tracking passwords. It's very difficult, right? Moving on to our next question. Which of the following is the first computer virus? It's Creeper, Blaster, Sessor or none of the above. I know you guys know it. So the correct answer is Creeper. Our next question is, which of the following option is used to protect data against passwords? Now this is a security question. Authorization, authentication, encryption or non-reputation. The correct answer is, it's encryption. What does TCP IP stands for? Is it option A, B, C or none of the above? The correct answer is transmission control protocol, internet protocol. Now our next question is, why would a hacker use a proxy server? Any reasons? To create a stronger connection with the target, to create a ghost server on the network, to obtain a remote access connection or to hide malicious activity on the internet. The correct answer is to hide malicious activity on the network. That's why hacker uses a proxy server. Moving on to our next question, which of the following can be considered as the class of computer threats? Is it DDoS, phishing, soliciting or both A and C? The correct answer is DDoS attack is considered as the class of computer threats. Moving on to our final question, in Wi-Fi security, which of the following protocol is more used? WPA, WPA2, WPS or both A and C? The correct answer is WPA2. Just a quick info guys. If you want to make a career in cyber security, then IntelliPAT has a post-graduation certification in cyber security and ethical hacking by ENICT Academy, MNIT Jaipur. This course is of very high quality and cost effective as it is taught by MNIT professors and industry experts. That's it from our side guys. If you have any questions regarding this, put them in the comment section below. And stay tuned for more from Italypad.